So um, this study was on daytime napping and cognitive function, so thinking skills and brain size. And it was led by a um, brilliant PhD student, Valentina Pass, um, who's based in uh, Uruguay, but uh, works with us at, at UCL as well. Um, and with our excellent collaborator, um, Dr. Hassan Dashti from uh, Harvard University. And what we wanted to understand here was whether taking a daytime nap might cause better cognitive function, might cause us to have better thinking skills. Um, and the thinking skills or cognitive function measures would be the same ones that we used in the previous study. So the, the, the matching of the card pairs um, to, to measure uh, visual memory and the snap game to measure reaction time or processing speed. So we use the same uh, data set, the same, roughly the same people. We use the UK Biobank study. Again, we needed a very large sample. Um, so those two measures are, are the same. Additionally, what we did for the first time was to, um, because the UK Biobank participants have undergone whole body uh, MRI, um, we have uh, scans of their brain that have been segmented and processed by some very clever colleagues. Um, and we are able to understand the size of the whole brain and the size of each brain structure, uh, which is really important. And there are certain brain structures that are um, that shrink more rapidly uh, in people who are more likely to, to have dementia. For example, the hippocampus, which is uh, greatly involved in learning and memory. Um, but the measure of the whole brain, which we call total brain volume, and we measure that in cubic centimeters, um, that's a really important way to also determine how rapidly our, our, our brain is aging in, in a quite a straightforward way. So we were looking at all of this in this study. The rationale or, or the idea that I had for this part of the study uh, to do with thinking skills came from some really interesting experiments done by um, a lab in the States led by a professor called Sarah Mednick. Um, and she's she's found using experimental approaches that essentially napping could be causally linked to better thinking skills. And they recommend napping for up to, you know, one to two hours a day could, could be helping with that. I'll talk a bit about that later though. Um, and then we additionally, have the data from 35 to 40,000 individuals who, who have a, an MRI scan. So what did we find? <clears throat> so we found our, our main finding was that taking a daytime nap regularly, and this, this refers to people who responded that they are frequent daytime nappers, so we refer to them as habitual nappers, um, appears that it could certainly help preserve the size of our brains as we age. Now, this does not mean that um, having a nap can change our brain. It can't increase the size of our brain. But the individuals who have uh, a regular daytime nap had a larger brain size, as opposed to the individuals who um, who are less likely to nap. So we, but we did not find an effect of daytime napping on thinking skills or cognitive function. Um, so um, it's possible that. Our study looked at slightly different aspects of cognitive function compared to the studies from the States. So that's something that we um, we were not able to replicate, but we need to think a bit more about for, uh, for future work. So does this matter? Absolutely. Um, so reduced brain size is linked to higher stress levels as measured with uh, by cortisol, greater risk of earlier mortality and risk of sleep apnea, um, which is a sleep a sleep disordered breathing, um, which is quite common in uh, in in midlife, particularly in in males who are uh, overweight or obese, um, and and other things as well. And reduced brain size, importantly, is linked to um, greater risk of dementia. So, if we want to try to preserve our brain size for as long as possible, uh, and a daytime nap is is a potential way to do that, then why why not give it a try? We all at least all of those who are of working age, um, we could do with, you know, taking a break in the day and, and doing something that might might help our, our brain health. Um, also, importantly, taking a nap uh, can help compensate for short or long or poor, poor sleep at night, but it's not meant to replace nighttime sleep. We still need to be sleeping at night um, to, to replenish 
our, our brain cells and feel rested in the in the morning and, and tackle the, the, the next day. So that's not what we're, we're recommending here at all. Um, so this study um, essentially went viral. Uh, I think we were even on TikTok, um, Instagram, all, all sorts of places. Um, Have I got news for you? Uh, did a, a tweet about the study. Um, we were on BBC Radio, lots of places, lots of interest in this study. And I think one of the reasons, uh, especially when I spoke to people on the radio very early in the morning, you know, five o'clock onwards, was that, um, you know, these people would say to me, oh, well, I, we nap because, you know, we, we get up early to, to work. Um, but we didn't know that it, it might be a positive thing. Um, so one thing about this study that was really nice was that we were coming to the public with a positive message rather than a, you know, if you do this, then you'll get this illness, or if you don't do this, you'll get this illness, which unfortunately is is often what we find when we're doing medical research. And, and we need to tell people, obviously, what we find, whether it's good or bad. But it was really nice to have something positive and to say, well, maybe taking a break in the day and having a nap could, could be a good thing for, for your brain as, as you get older. <clears throat> 